So WWDC 2023 is officially in the books, or at least the keynote portion of it. It was very long because Apple literally announced everything. Everything you could possibly think of. Uh, everything that we have been talking about for so long has happened. And so I'm going to do my best to run through everything, but it's probably going to not be quite everything, but we'll, we'll figure it out. I'm going to run through everything and my thoughts. I was there at the event. I was filming the entire time on my phone and uploading shorts and TikToks and Instagram. So go check those out and uh, be sure to subscribe and also follow the Mac Rumor Show podcast. I'll be doing that live from Apple Park tomorrow. And also we will be doing a, um, we'll have a special video. I can't go into two, there's be a special video tomorrow. Let's start with the thing that Apple announced first, which is the MacBook Air. We've been talking about it for so long. Uh, I can run through what it is, but it's pretty much the same 13-inch MacBook, just a little bit bigger. Uh, we do have the Liquid Retina display, 500 nits of brightness. Um, it just looks really, really good. It's already an incredible laptop. It's Apple's best-selling laptop, or one of its best-selling laptops. And now you get 18 hours of battery. You get the M2 chip and a 15-inch form factor. There are six speakers with a woofer. So the sound quality should be improved over the 13-inch MacBook Air. Obviously, it's larger, so there's more room for uh, some better speakers in there. And the best thing about it is it starts at $1299, which is actually a little bit cheaper than I was anticipating. And it drops the M3, or I'm sorry, the M2 13-inch down to $1099. And you can still get the M1 at an even more reduced price. Uh, that'll be at $999. Um, you can get it up to 24 gigs of RAM too, by the way, with two terabytes of SSD storage. And then we're going to move on to the Mac Studio. That actually did happen. That was a new rumor as of a few weeks ago that really picked up a lot of steam. Uh, we got the new Mac Studio with the new M2 Ultra chip, which is basically two M2 Maxes kind of glued together. And it gives lots of power. I'm going to try to see here. You, get a, you can get a 24-core CPU, 20% faster than the M1 Ultra, 76-core GPU, and it supports 192 gigs of, un, or of unified memory. Uh, it can render 50 times faster, apparently. Uh, it's 25% faster than the M1 Max, if you get the M1 Max version, because there is, by the way, an M2 Max version. And it all starts at $19.99, which is insane. Such a good deal for creators out there who are really making this their full-time job. $19.99 for an M2 Max Max Studio is just amazing. Um, oh, by the way, uh, the M2 Ultra can support like six ProRes monitors, which is an insane thing to think about. And Apple discussed that when it showed off the brand new Mac Pro. It's finally here. It's modular. It runs the M2 Ultra. It has insane specs. So I believe every Mac Pro has afterburner performance built in. The M2 Ultra gives you the speed of seven afterburners. Uh, you, can encore, you can encode 24 camera feeds and encode into ProRes. There's six Thunderbolt ports on the back, six open expansion slots. Uh, you obviously got your PCIe and there's going to be a bunch of new accessories and things coming out. Uh, so yeah, that starts at $6,999. So not entirely sure that anyone out there really needs a Mac Pro, but if you are someone who thinks that you do, well, this is available and it's by far one of the most powerful machines, if not the most powerful machine uh, that runs Mac OS, I can tell you that. Now that was the end of the hardware portion. We moved on to software and uh, iOS 17 and honestly, all of the software updates just look absolutely incredible. Uh, basically, I feel like Apple went on a lot of the message boards, maybe the Mac Rumors forums, or read a lot of complaints that people had and just said, all right, check, we're going to fix that, we're going to get fixed that, we're going to give you this feature, we're going to give you this feature. Tons of things. They started off with the phone app, which uh, is something that I never would have thought would have been exciting, but exciting things happen. There's a new contact poster, which basically gives you the ability to uh, make a very fancy contact card, and then you can share that with people instead of like, oh, here, take my number down, blah, blah, blah. Now you can just kind of airdrop it to somebody. That's called name drop, I believe. Uh, you can do live voicemail calls, which is basically like call screening uh, while the voicemail is happening. If you decide, you know, you see it on your desk, you see the transcription come in, you're like, you know what, I probably should answer that. Go ahead and pick it up and you can talk to somebody while they're leaving that voicemail. Um, you can also leave somebody a FaceTime message, which is something a lot of people have wanted. It's finally here. So if nobody answers, you can leave a little video message for them to kind of let them know why you were calling them. We got a new check-in feature, which lets loved ones know kind of where you're headed to and they can kind of check in on you and make sure you've made it to your destination safely and give you a call or you can kind of let them know that you've made it safely, which is always nice. 
Autocorrect got an update where uh, now you can send the correct ducking message to people if you wanted to. I had to steal that joke from Apple. I thought that was really, really funny. Way to go. And um, actually acknowledging that some words just need to be autocorrected. And so finally, that's going to happen. The standby feature, which we didn't really know the name of it, but it's called standby. Uh, that really picked up, the, those rumors really picked up over the last few weeks, basically where you can dock your iPhone um, and charge it on your nightstand and set it up into like a little mini kind of nest hub, a nest home hub. It shows you your widgets in full screen view, shows you your calendar if you wanted it, uh, different clocks and things. So kind of like a really cool bedside mode for your iPhone. So happy to see that. The new journal app made its way as well. Um, all of the things that we basically predicted and then some, and I haven't even looked at the list of new features that Apple probably has up on its iOS 17 website right now. And so I'm sure there's tons of other cool quality of life features. That whole phrase really, really hit home this week. Moving on to iPadOS, although this feature kind of just went really fast and I'm guessing it's for iOS as well. And it's also on the Mac, but the widgets on um, your iPad are now interactive. You can put them on your lock screen and you can customize your lock screen on your iPad just like you would on your iPhone. But now there's way more functionality to it. Having widgets on your lock screen is incredible. Apple is just giving us everything that we wanted. You have new uh, live activities also on the lock screen, which is really nice. Uh, there's a new health app with a much better looking dashboard, which is something we've heard about in the rumors as well. Uh, but that's uh, made its way to the iPad. And there's PDF live collaboration for those of you who need to make PDFs uh, you know, together, you can do that on your iPad as well. So iPad OS definitely took a lot of iOS features and then uh, added some of these new ones. And then of course, again, I haven't even looked at the iPad OS 17 website, so I'm sure there's a bunch more, but then Mac OS really takes a lot of iOS and iPad OS features adds it into Mac OS Sonoma, by the way, that is the new name for it. And, uh, we have new screensavers, which is what Apple started with kind of crazy, uh, new screensavers. There's new widgets on your desktop, which are also interactive. There's a new game mode so that you can get all of your CPU and GPU priorities in a row here. It lowers the audio latency when you have AirPods on and it's just better responsiveness when you have controllers hooked up as well. And uh, there is a toolkit for game mode that developers can use as well. Uh, there's presenter overlay when video conferencing. And this works with, works with a couple of other apps like Zoom and WebEx and all that, where you can basically show your slides or whatever you're presenting behind you and like this like cool depth of feel. I don't know how it works. I cannot wait to test that. That looks insane. But yeah, you can basically have like a live news feed where you're just discussing people and behind you, you can have like something scrolling and, and just images and things and whatever you created. And it's just playing behind you as if you had that set up automatically. Pretty cool. One other major feature for Mac OS that really caught my attention was the ability to create web apps, which doesn't sound crazy, but like when you look at the, the I believe the example was Confluence. They had Confluence up, they made a web app for Confluence and uh, it then became like a minimal, sleek, different type of UI, just like a better stripped down version that actually looked like it created a web app. It adds the icon for Confluence and the name down in your dock and it just looks official. Like there's a Confluence for Mac you know, app that's out there. And so you can do this with any website apparently. And Apple said that developers don't need to do anything special. It will just work. So I'm thinking YouTube apps, uh, you know, HBO Max or just Max, whatever it's called. Um, and then there's just tons of things that you can do. And so excited to get my hands and test uh, Mac OS Sonoma. Uh, there are also some audio features. TVOS even got a little bit of an introduction. We'll start with that. TVOS, Control Center redesign, finally, something we've wanted. Also, Find My for the remote. I mean, they didn't really call it that, but basically you can locate your remote, which is, I can't believe that functionality was there all along. Well, now you can do that. Um, for music, you have Apple Music SharePlay in your car. Uh, so you can basically, which this kind of makes me feel strange. If people get in my car, they can automatically uh, like join the session and start adding music, which I don't know how if I how I feel about that. I don't want people coming in and hijacking my music in my car, but that's something that you can do if you wanted to. Um, for AirPlay, uh, there's new AirPlay in hotel. You just scan a QR code, you're connected to the Wi-Fi, and you can shoot over your video to your hotel room. I could really use that right now, honestly. God, there's so much. We haven't even gotten to Watch OS. Watch OS 10 got a huge redesign, like in a huge redesign. There's so much to talk about there. There's an all new like widget view. Um, you got like a smart stack going on. It's using machine learning to figure out what widget you uh, need when you need it. There are new watch faces. There are new uh, types of widgets and complications and things. It's just an entirely new experience, less about Watch OS apps and more about these 
widget features and things that you can glance at uh, very, very quickly. And so there's a lot to go through there. And then let's just jump right to the one more thing. Apple did a one more thing, and obviously we were all expecting it. It was the headset. We do have one more thing. Introducing Apple Vision Pro. For all of you who said the headset wasn't gonna happen, it happened. It's Apple Vision Pro and it runs Vision OS, which was honestly one of the only things that I wasn't expecting. We were thinking Reality Pro and XR OS. Those were one of the only things that were kind of wrong. But other than that, I mean, everything else is pretty much spot on with what we were anticipating. Incredible 4K lenses in each eye to be able to see. And there was a lot of focus, by the way, on AR, more so VR, but yeah, you can, see people can see your eyes which is also a really trippy thing i saw it in person um i didn't get a chance to experience it quite yet but hopefully that will change um but yeah i mean it looks sleek it looks insane it's 3500 dollars, and it'll be available some point next year we're gonna do a whole video on it um but yeah apple officially announced apple vision pro and uh i'm gonna do a whole video on almost everything that i talked about but i i mean i don't really know what i have a whole list of notes here I'll just try to read some things here. Um, so it's an aluminum frame in the front. It's very light so that, you know, the battery, again, we talked about this. It is a connection, um, a wired connection to a battery pack. Uh, as you can see here, I'll try to show you the battery. It's sitting there on the table. Um, it has flexible straps. I mean, they really went through this headband that was like 3D printed and knitted or 3D knitted. I don't even know. Um, you can get prescription lenses to put inside so that you can use it when you have glasses. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's just so much to it that I will be doing a full video very, very soon. Hint, hint, wink, wink, please, uh, subscribe so you don't miss that. Sorry to ramble. There's just so much, but WWDC 2023 is honestly the best WWDC that I've ever experienced. Not because I was there. I mean, that was part of it, but just so many things that were amazing that actually happened. I don't think there's any complaints on my end whatsoever. And so, yeah, I want to hear from you in the comments down below. How did you feel about this event? Are you happy? Are you unhappy? Let me know down in those comments. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.